Hey everybody, welcome to the Third Planet Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson. I'm joined today by Kamran Schuster. Hi, how are you guys doing? And uh, today we're going to be talking about the Showa era of Godzilla. We're going to go through every Showa era Godzilla movie today um, in preparation for Kong versus Godzilla coming out in the next couple months. So, Kamran, I know you're a huge Godzilla fan like I am, and I am very excited to go into all these movies. Oh, definitely. And it's, dude, it's exactly two months away now by the day. So excited um i uh i think that we've both seen these movies so many times that we're just gonna go off of memory we haven't had to really rewatch any of them uh i had i, re- I did rewatch uh, the 1954 godzilla the other the other day because i'm uh at the time i'm recording this i haven't written it yet but there will be another uh video out for godzilla 1954 before this that goes more into depth than that movie but I think without further ado, let's just start with uh, the original Godzilla movie. Definitely. Dude, that was, I mean, it's like, you know, the classic one. Mm -hmm. Uh, People are just doing their own thing and mysteriously ships are getting destroyed and eventually get the reveal that there's a giant monster just destroying things. And it's like never, you've never seen that before. It's like the first time you get it. And uh, pretty much what it's just like he gets revealed and eventually he destroys the city of Tokyo and the amount of destruction that's happening. And I think like one of the key things I always uh, love thinking about are the guys in the radio tower. Oh like yeah. Broadcasting it as the it reporters. happens. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, he's coming over. He's going to kill us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are dying right now. <laughs> yeah. Like... That movie is, uh, I, I think a lot of people really forget the dark and depressing roots that, the godzilla franchise comes from because that's the japanese version especially is not a campy fun movie it is depressing it shows people dying in the hospital it shows people getting burnt to death like kids crying over their dead parents and it is really disturbing in some scenes and it's a heavy movie and for a movie about a giant radioactive lizard it carries a lot of weight yeah i mean it's got like uh especially too, Dr. Sarazawa creates a weapon mm-hmm. of considerable destruction called the oxygen destroyer. And it, as the name implies, destroys oxygen and they use that to kill Godzilla and turn him into a skeleton. But the weapon is so dangerous that he fears it falling into the wrong hands of like basically government powers. Uh, it could be used as another form of oh, like spoilers another... in this video, by the way. Oh yeah, that's definitely spoilers. Yeah, there's going like, to be know, heavy spoilers. He fears that it'll become another weapon on par with that of a nuclear bomb and like kills himself so his secret that you can't replicate the weapon now. And the movie itself too, it's, it's a answer to the American bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki as well as that of the nuclear weapon testing that's been going on in the Aleutians. And of course they can't, directly make a movie about those so godzilla is the metaphor for that like godzilla is is the nuclear bombs it's like he's man-made in a way and it's the sins of man as they've created weapons of terrible destruction yeah and i i love the way that godzilla is he doesn't really have scales it's more disfigured his the bumps on his skin are disfigurement from the nuclear bomb that woke him up and uh I like the idea that Godzilla is this animal that this is angry because he lives in constant pain and he's been kind of woken up by, you know, mankind and everything. It's a really cool concept. Um, this is still the best Godzilla movie. Um, I think it, in terms of the, I would say in terms of being an actual film and making a message come out, it, I would say it's one of the two main films for sure. Uh, yeah. The other one would be eras later, but uh yeah this is definitely like a very powerful film that is, is of course a piece of history honestly at this point like it it's i would say if you would watch any godzilla movie this is the one you would watch and oh yeah i would say it's almost a requirement in terms yeah. of just like film history and just history in general it is a it doesn't look the special effects still hold up really really good it is it's something that you know, I if I whenever I tell people to watch this movie, it's set all your 
everything you think you know about Godzilla to the side before you watch this because it's not like the mainstream uh, way that we think about kaiju movies in general. And that's a good thing, I think, because it it helps you take the source material the source material a lot more seriously and it combines a lot of the great things that you know we saw in previous monster movies like uh because i know uh who was the director for this movie was it ishiro honda that directed it yes yes he and the producer i can't remember what the producer's name is um but they were inspired by of course king kong because king kong was you know that was that movie was everybody's inspiration, the original 1933 King Kong. And they were also inspired by uh, Ray Harryhausen's film, The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms, which is another great monster movie anybody should look up. Uh, you've probably seen that really iconic scene of the the dinosaur destroying the lighthouse in the middle of the night and everything. That was a really uh, famous scene from that movie. So it takes a lot of the elements from those movies, like, you know, with King Kong where they go into these, they invade these natives land, they take their God away and they exploit them for money and everything. It takes a lot of those kinds of themes and puts it into a a different kind of, I guess, perspective with, you know, the Japanese bombings and everything. And it really, it works so well in this movie at, at sending a message. Definitely. And you really get the believability of terror that's happening in a city yeah. As there's a monster rampaging through, and no matter what weapons they throw at it, it just doesn't work. It's just not even damaging him at the end of the day. And at, you see all of the repercussions of these actions. Like, you just see everything that occurs. And it's also weird, too. It's funny when you look at it, and you look at its alternate version that came out, like, a year or two later, uh, King mm-hmm. of the Monsters. And they insert... Because, of course, this film did amazing in Japan. Like, it, it did everything. And they wanted it to do well in America as well. But, you know, they're not white. So yeah. they had to insert an American actor as the kind of the, uh, what would you call it for the audience? The um, Someone for them to follow that, yeah. they, that they recognize. He and is, he's basically the audience. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that, that was the only version of this movie that we got for a very, very, very long time in the United States was the 1956 King of the Monsters American remake. And, you know, it doesn't I don't think it really does the whole thing justice. Um, it's very obvious that they chopped a lot of it up and they cut a lot out. But, you know, I'll give uh, the movie this. You know, Raymond Burr does the the main character is played by Raymond Burr, who's more famous for pay, playing Perry Mason. And he's a he's a very good actor. And I think that he did a very good job at portraying the weight of the situation in the movie. Oh, yeah, because he and, even gets himself like uh, hit, taken down during the city attack. Like he yeah. nearly dies himself, too. And you get like that whole thing. And he watches as everything happens with like Dr. Sarazawa and everything else. Yeah. But once again, he's just kind of like he is by all means, the witness of the film when you yes. watch it. Yeah. And so if you're going to, the American version's okay. And I, I, if you just don't feel like reading or reading subtitles one night, go ahead and watch it. But I highly recommend you watch the original Japanese cut first. Um, Cause that's how it was meant to be viewed. And Dr. Umani is a very good, he's a great character that really tries to understand Godzilla. He doesn't want to kill him. He thinks that we should study him and try to figure out, you know, how he came back, why he came back. And it's a very, he leaves a very ominous message at the end, which they, I don't think that they're setting it up for, they weren't setting it up for a sequel, but he gives a message at the end, but because they killed Godzilla, they don't even know how to re they can't even research him now to see if how he came back or how to stop another Godzilla that's that's out there. Yeah. And it's a very, very, it's a downer ending. It's a depressing movie. It's a sad movie, but it's, it's so good. It's still very good. And they, they definitely never have to deal with Godzilla ever again, for sure. No, like, never happens. It's not like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. He never comes back. No, no, ever. not at all. No. Um, <laughs> So I, uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend this one to anybody who, anybody who wants to get started. I think this is the first one they should watch. Definitely. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, unless you're like a really little kid and you won't understand it, but for sure, like this yeah, don't is watch this movie. If you're a little kid, this is yeah, pretty, this is really just like what's disturbing. happening. Yeah, it's pretty I disturbing. I, I think I still watched King of the Monsters as my first Godzilla film, and then was, like over time I saw the others because I don't know how old I was when I saw yeah. the original 1954 Japanese version. I wasn't in. I it wasn't until I was in college that I watched the the original 1954 one because that's how long it took it to get released in the United States, and they had the uh, two disc special edition at a uh, Target when I went there one time, and it had the the 54 cut. And, or the yeah the original Japanese cut and then the American version and the the Japanese version is called Gojira it's not called Godzilla yeah. so yeah again highly recommend this one I think this was the third the fifty six version was the third Godzilla movie I'd ever seen I think the third or the second yeah because I think I got the it was like the Godzilla DVD collection it was like the two case set and it had mm-hmm. almost all of the Showa era movies but it was still missing like a good chunk of them like it missed all of the ones that were like after destroy all Mon- i think it wasn't even destroy all monsters in there i think it was everything before destroy all monsters mm-hmm. and then uh specifically the only ones they had after were like terror of mecha godzilla and maybe godzilla's revenge uh, actually i think i have that same that same vhs case you're talking about it had a bunch of random godzilla movies in it it's very useful now too, just saying because in terms of if you ever want to buy these films, especially the specifically the Showa era, mm-hmm. uh, it has most of the film, uh, most of the films from that era. You can get the rest on Blu-ray, pretty much. That are more singles like uh, Ibira Horror, The Deep, Smog Monster, Megalon, Destroy yeah. Monsters, those ones. But when you get the Showa era Criterion Collection, you get all fifteen. Only caveat is they're only the uh, Japanese versions. So you mm-hmm. won't have the old American cuts if you ever want the more wacky kind of crazy stuff. So I would suggest getting that DVD collection or uh, along with those other Blu-rays because they they honestly do have the best like they may not have the best Japanese versions, but they'll still have everything there for the most part. That right. You can- and so. there's some things that when we get to those movies uh, later on in the video that I want to talk about with the. Uh, the, a lot of the show era movies it's kind of sucks with these with those ones uh how they're being oh, sure. released but i guess uh it's a good time to move on to godzilla raids again this is the only show era godzilla movie i haven't watched all the way through i've only seen bits and pieces of it it's uh yeah so this one this was one of the two show era films i didn't watch when i was a kid i was very it was never I on guess- it wasn't, uh, and yeah. it's like as a kid, I watched a lot of them through different Godzilla marathons, especially uh, before the '98 uh, Emmerich Godzilla came out. Mm-hmm. They were doing a bunch of marathons, like nonstop. It was all over the place to the point where, like, uh, my mom and I would record them all on VHS and just like yeah. you know, write down on the tape all the different ones would be on there. I still got and all my Godzilla tapes. Did, did, was it Sci-Fi that did the the Stompathon things? I think, and it had the dude in the suit walk by. Yeah, stuff, I yes, sci-fi would I do might these, have, they do these Godzilla marathons called Stompathons. I may have gotten rid of them, um, just because they were like kind of some of them are getting cut up and stuff, and the VHSs mm-hmm. might weren't, weren't really doing good. But I did, I do have the VHS. I'll, I'll see at the end which ones I have on VHS still the original, actual, like mm-hmm. legit VHS copies. But uh, yeah, this one and Son of Godzilla were the only two that weren't in those marathons. So I didn't see those me, until way later. This me too. The same thing with Son of Godzilla. I didn't see that one until like recently. The one they showed too much of was definitely Godzilla's Revenge. I was like, please stop showing this one. I hate but that. But that's movie. just that's a, yeah, it's a whole thing. We'll get to that one. They'll be fun. Yeah, we're gonna get but, to we're, uh, gonna, we're gonna get to all those movies. Godzilla Raids again is it it's it's very interesting because it's in between all of the more ridiculous godzilla movies that are much more like crazy monster fights the ones that you really grew up loving as a kid mm-hmm. and it's still like it's in between that and it's in between the 1954 and they don't really treat it as a wacky monster fight movie to an extent i mean kind of the fight does look a little wacky but uh it's still very much in that tone of being serious mm-hmm. and it starts out pretty much like there i think there's pilots that come up into a island and on that island, they see another Godzilla. And they're like, oh my god, it's Godzilla. And he's fighting Anguirus. And it's the first appearance of Anguirus, who 
in later movies you find out is Godzilla's best friend. Yeah, and... you, you never. A lot of people don't know that that Anguirus was actually Godzilla's first uh, ally, enemy. Yeah, or oh, ally. Yeah, first ally and uh, yeah, first enemy and ally, pretty much both. Because yeah, uh, everybody always thinks of Mothra, <clears throat> Rodan, and Ghidorah, but uh, Anguirus was the first one. And I love it. Anguirus never gets enough credit. I he is thought. literally He's the underrated. most underrated monster for yeah, sure. Him and Baragon, I always thought were really underrated. Oh, definitely. And Anguirus, you know, they just show him as like this monster of mystery. You're just like, who is this new monster? And the guys come back like injured and they get picked up and you get one character from the previous films. Uh, Dr. Yamani comes back yeah. and he gets to go through and explain like, okay, so we found out there's a second Godzilla. But also, he's not the only monster. It looks like more are now awakening. And yeah. they're like, what's this one? And he's like, this is Anguirus. It seems like he, if I remember correctly, it could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're like, it looks like he's a descendant or a he's in line with that of the species of Ankylosaurus. Yeah, the Ankylosaurus or whatever they call it. The ones that had like the big club on their yeah, tail. Ankylosaurus. And all yeah. Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus, yeah. So uh, they kind of go on to explain that and the humans are pretty much like a lot of the uh, are pilots for the most part. So it's like this one's more fighter pilot oriented. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to figure out how to stop these monsters. And at one, you know, at one point, they come and start fighting on one of the... I forget which city or area of Japan. I think this one is Osaka because it's got the big-ass pagoda in the middle. That's what it was. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, what's interesting, too, is when you, you it, it brought to light for me that... The generic thing for Godzilla, and everyone always talks about it, is, oh, Godzilla's coming and he's going to destroy Tokyo. They never really say Japan, they say Tokyo specifically. Mm -hmm. But really, the first movie is the only one where he's actually really attacking Tokyo. And they kind mm -hmm. of pick a different place for all the other movies besides maybe destroy all monsters. But that's like more of the, oh, it's all over the world, Tokyo included. But mm -hmm. for the most part, they're all different places in Japan that they do each time, uh, which is kind of more interesting because you kind of see different things. And, you know, they, they go through the fight. There's not much else to say, but yeah. when they finally do get to it, they're like, oh, we're going to use these bombs to kind of like freeze them or uh, it was either freeze them or use uh, rock slides to bury them. I've seen the original. I've seen the the uh, the fight scenes in it. First off, it's brutal because Godzilla straight up burns Angulus to death. Yes. Or Angulus. Like it's, it's brutal. And then uh, I've seen the way the fights like they, they move really quickly. They're not shot as well as... Uh, the the 54 one it's, it comes off way more as a campy monster movie it almost looks point. like puppets fighting at one point yeah like, it's it's just kind of at that point but the all the human aspects are still hyper serious so you don't get like i said yeah. it's like that weird bridge in between them and you could tell it was made on a lower budget too oh definitely and yeah. they end up basically trapping him in like an iceberg and yeah. you'll notice too this is kind of where it starts off where each movie ends with Godzilla in a specific place where they end up like putting him or he winds up from finding a monster. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of similar to then the following film. He appears out of something of that similarity. So right. in this one, he gets trapped in ice. And then in the next film, he comes out of ice. And yeah. it, this it was... continues that trend. I noticed that, but with the Showa era, though, that like the continuity is very hit or miss. So like it kind of it starts out having some continuity, then kind of fades away. Oh, yeah, very much so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they they don't they don't shy away from reusing the same uh, clips and footage for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, the stock. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll talk about that, too. The stock footage. But uh, Godzilla's design in this movie, I think, is, is it's not terrible. I, I could tell that it's a that they slim the suit down for fighting in this movie yes. so that they get easier for the actor to move. So it comes off way more baggy and skinnier. It doesn't have that weight that that 54 suit had. And uh, the humans are pretty, they're fine. Uh, there's nothing exceptional about them in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Yamani that he comes back, he's not in there like the whole time. He's more there during the scientific dis discussions, but otherwise when all the action all of the main plot is taking place for the most part. It's just the group of pilots and their love interests and whatnot. Uh, but other than that, like there's not really anything else that really occurs. That's um, I guess of speaking points. It's honestly, it, it's uh, of all, all the show era. It's one of the more uneventful movies. 
where mm-hmm. it's it's kind of it falls out of the mind for the most part when you're like oh what's your favorite godzilla movie so you're like it's one of those godzilla raids again you're kind of i would be very surprised i i would i don't know if i'd ever find someone that would be like oh yeah this is my top five or my favorite mm-hmm. one nobody ever um, talks about it it really is a i think one of the forgotten ones of the the show era i think mainly because it came in between two uh major godzilla movies yeah too. for sure but otherwise honestly there's not there's not much else to say uh definitely little when we get into like the late 60s and definitely the 70s i'll have a lot to say but this one yeah yeah me not too. Much too much yeah so i think uh i don't know would you recommend this one i mean i'm gonna be honest i would probably recommend all of them but uh if you would have to miss some i would say this is a missable one for sure yeah yeah you, not required <laughs> But moving on, this next movie is required, especially for the next movie that's coming out. It's hard to believe that they did this this early in Godzilla's career. King Kong versus Godzilla from 1963. God, this movie's awful. But I'm just going to say right now, 10 out of 10, I love it. It's amazing. It is. It is so... Whether it's in Japanese or English, it is a very funny movie. This is also... It's funny because Godzilla Raids again came out in 1955 mm-hmm. and Godzilla, you know, came out in 1954 King Kong versus Godzilla. That was that 1962, right? Yeah. 62 or 63. So it was a while before that we got another Godzilla movie. And this is the first time King Kong and Godzilla appeared in color. Yeah. And this is also a weird revival because it's pretty much like after Raids again, that's a, that's a what eight year gap. Yeah, and so it's, a, there it's a direct sequel to it because he's in an iceberg. Yeah, so for the end of the you, last one, you don't have, and besides that too, for King Kong movies, like you have Kong and Son of Kong, and those are like early, you know, those are in the 30s and whatnot. You don't have any more of these films, and this kind of revives at least one of them because the other doesn't come back for like 40 years. But uh, <laughs> it it definitely revives Godzilla, and this kind of kicks off. An entire this this is really what kicks off the true Showa era. It does. Of Godzilla. This, this is the Godzilla that the mainstream audience knows, and you know a lot of us love. It is. It's got to, it's okay. Let's just say this first. King Kong looks awful in this movie. That is a horrible. I mean, I think it's suit. the most accurate depiction of King Kong, if I do say so myself. It looks awful. His mouth doesn't move. It looks like a carpet. Like classic is, monkey, you know. <laughs> this is the first time they ever did a mammal though with the the rubber suits, right? Yeah. And okay, yeah, that it shows. Yeah. The um, I would, this one has. It's cool because you know it starts off. He pops out the iceberg, and they're like, "Oh God, he's back again." That's a great scene, though. When the, yeah. the submarine, they literally get a submarine stuck in the side of an iceberg that's like oozing radiation that they're trying. The Americans do because there's white people in these movies now. And so the Americans get a submarine stuck in an iceberg that they're trying to investigate because there's a bunch of radiation coming out of it. And then you see the ceiling of the submarine catch on fire and you hear Godzilla's roar. And then as this helicopter circling over, you see Godzilla like emerge out of the iceberg. And it is so cool because this is also one of the best Godzilla suit designs. Oh yeah. It's, it's so awesome. And then you get like like, alligator. It looks like. And this is uh, this is where big pharma comes in. But the pharmaceutical <laughs> company comes in and is like, "Oh, we're gonna check out this island and see what." what I'm pretty sure it was like your, what resources we can find. And eventually, you know, so they stupid. they find out about Kong and they find out about the natives. And I'll just say this to this movie, of course, um, the natives are all Japanese people, but they have uh, tanned themselves to a much darker complexion. Uh, yeah. But also, you know, Japan doesn't really. At that time, I would say they don't get get out much. So they, they're not really out there. They don't check things out. I, I'll, I'm going to give them a pass for this. But they could like, have at least cast some Filipino people or something to play the know. parts. <laughs> you know, instead of going out and doing brown face. <laughs> you know, it's, things happen sometimes. Yeah, it's but, whatever. Yeah, it, it's not it's not the worst. But yeah. uh, they they have an awesome Kong theme, and you know, eventually you see Kong because he rescues the a couple of the natives from a giant octopus which, which is a real octopus by the it's way it's an actual it's just an octopus and it's yeah. just, 
<laughs> it's just the octopus doing stuff and they're like whoa it looks so big yeah. and they got a real octopus threw it on set let it like move around this poor octopus then afterwards they ate it yeah they said yeah and then oh they oh they, yeah that's japan but uh it's uh <laughs> they they uh, natives try to fight the octopus the kong comes and saves them they then proceed to get black get kong blackout drunk and then, I never uh, understood that scene because Kong just shows up, drinks the juice, and then passes out in the village. Yeah, he passes out because they also do his music to knock him out too. It's fa- his favorite lullaby. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they, the pharmaceutical company proceeds to go, we'll take him. Uh, we'll trade you some more cigarettes and uh, we'll trade you this radio. <laughs> this movie shows a little kid smoking cigarettes. Yep. And the mom walks over and is like, if he gets one, I got one. <laughs> Oh, great. So great. Imperialism. Um, so, yeah, that happens. They have Kong on this big ass raft that they never show the raft. They never show them making the raft. They never show them making the raft at, in the original 33 King Kong either. But oh, so no. they got King Kong on this raft and they're bringing him to they're bringing him to the thing. And then you also get that fight in the Arctic with Godzilla when he first comes ashore at the military base. That's oh, yeah. a good they fight. Try to, they try to fight him and they get their asses kicked yeah. pretty fast. That's a good fight, though, when he's destroying the military base. Oh, he yeah. He no, looks awesome. so pissed off the way he's like burning all of these soldiers alive. Yeah. And I think uh, if I remember correct, because you got the two guys that work for the pharmaceutical company. You got the boss who's like an idiot. Oh, yeah. This uh, movie's a comedy, by the way. They intentionally wrote this as a comedy. comedy. Yeah, and you got the love interest there as well. And at one point, you two know, love interests, two love interests, yeah. And one this of guy's them pulling two chicks at the same time. Things happen, but <laughs> uh, at one point, you know, Godzilla gets to land, and she's trying to escape. Uh-huh. And you know, she gets on the train. And they're like, "Oh, Godzilla's here! Get off the train! Everyone run!" And you just that's another good scene through. with the train. I, yeah. I thought what's funny too is she just she can't run. <laughs> she just falls. Yeah, she every, falls in the water, and Godzilla's everywhere. miles away. But he's like, "I'm coming for you." And uh, I love it because it feels like a, they try to make it feel like a very much like one on one, like like this a woman slasher is Personally, movie. getting chased by Godzilla, the, this entire crowd of people ran away, but this one woman has his full attention. But he's honestly just walking. I don't even know if he'd even notice her, to be honest. But yeah, he's just going after the train because they say that he was attracted to the train lights. So that's why he went over and started attacking the train. And the music's really good in that scene yes. as Godzilla's like destroying the the train. You see all these people dying and all that. See, that's what I didn't realize as a little kid until I was older, I was like, oh my God, there are people dying in these movies. There are people and thought... there are people in those buildings. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, I thought the, oh, he killed, he destroys one train that's still moving her train. They all get off. Yeah. Uh, okay. Trains. Yeah. And then I was like, um, wait a minute, they're all gone. But... And then, uh, actually, now that I think of it, this was the first time I ever saw Godzilla because I remember I saw this part with him destroying the train a long, long, long time ago. And that's when I was just like, what movie is this? My dad's like, it's Godzilla versus king kong i was like i love this but then i didn't watch the whole movie so then later on i was just begging my parents like i want to watch a full godzilla movie i had like uh, little glimpses of godzilla in my early early childhood so my early was memories. definitely one of the recorded movies like i've, I've seen this one oh, yeah. so many times and... i have the, i have the vhs copy that has the the uh I, oh, it's buried under a bunch of stuff i should have brought it out but it has like that the real like the yellow and pink godzilla king kong oh, versus godzilla logo and everything I'll, i got I'll the i got the blu-ray for it uh, I'll besides post a the criterion too. i got the single blu-ray i'll post a picture of it on instagram because it's nice. so good um so yeah okay oh and then the next scene king kong wakes up on the raft that's oh another my God. awesome scene isn't oh, and it oh the pharmaceutical boss comes down on the helicopter he's wearing his little shorts and he comes in like a like he was there exploring like he's the dressed island in a safari yeah yeah and i'm just like what the hell and you're just like, yeah, uh, just don't touch that. Uh, don't touch the dynamite uh, stand there. And so the he, what, first he thing freaking he does. leans on it. And it's just like, dude, it's the it's the one thing we told you not to do. And the guy's like comedically just like, oh, what are you doing? And uh, they're like, what, what's it for? And it's like, oh, in case he wakes up, if he if things get too bad, we all have to blow him up. It's just, you no, know, we'll just we kill him. Yeah, we'll just kill him. And he starts waking up and they're trying to figure it out. So uh 
he accidentally they're trying to fight him with it trying to use it and he falls on it and nothing happens so they gotta shoot the dynamite to blow him up and they do but then he just gets up and he's like, I mean, it's fucking, you know, they thought the dynamite was going to work on me. Like, nah. That was a great it. scene when he emerges from the water and he's just like screaming. That would yeah. have been a good time for Godzilla to show up and they have a sea battle. But, you know, but they're doing that in the new movie, which is cool. Yeah. And, you know, they, he gets to shore eventually. And then that's when they finally, uh, they have their first fight. And... and it is the lamest fight in all of Godzilla history when Kong and Godzilla first fight. It's hilarious, though, because it's yeah. like, you know, Kong is used to much smaller enemies. He's not used to someone his own size for once. Yeah. And Godzilla just like, I forget, I think Kong throws rocks at him. At one he point. throws a couple of rocks and then Godzilla just like burns him hella bad on his chest. And Godzilla does that stupid dance that he's doing with his arms and everything. And Kong's just like, he gets burned. And he's just like, oh, oh, my God, I'm on fire. So he just he like walks hand- away. Yeah, and he puts his hand on his head and just walks away. And these so assholes that kidnapped him from his home island are just like, Kong's chicken. What an asshole. And so uh, I... I love. I mean, that's that's. I've always thought of Kong as a chicken. It worked out for me personally as a Godzilla fan. I was and like, then, yeah, that's right. We should we should also mention that in the American version, you got white scientists like in random places throughout the movie explaining Godzilla and King Kong to the public, and it is so good because they're like oh, trying yeah. to explain everything. They're just like, well, Godzilla's this and Godzilla's that and everything. You got like the old white guy. And then, He's like, got a small brain. Yeah, and then you got the Japanese businessmen and everything. This movie is amazing. Yeah, and because I, I got the Blu-ray too, I was happy. It, it has, I think it has both cuts and it's like, the, you know, the Japanese cut was hard. The Japanese cut did not, it, just like the original Godzilla, was. it wasn't here. Uh, mm-hmm. It didn't come to America for a long time either. Uh, yeah. You had to like wait to watch the original version of that film, and the uh, the American version of it has the music replaced with the, uh, it's the music from the creature from the Black Lagoon, and I think a couple other Universal monster movies. Because I think Universal was the one that owned the rights to this movie. Yeah, because uh, Kong was a uh, Universal monster, or it was a Universal property. Yeah, because I think RKO folded, and then Kong went to Universal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And now he's yeah. at Warner Brothers, I think. He's been everywhere, King Kong. Yeah, Kong gets... He, he gets around. He, he, yeah, he gets around. Dirty old Kong. So, all right. So the first fight is terrible. And then uh, this is a good time to explain because they find out, they explain it in the dumbest way possible. They're like, we don't know why, but for some reason, Kong gets stronger from electricity. And this is because the movie was originally written as Godzilla versus Frankenstein. That's right. It was going to be Godzilla. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. It was going to be a big ass Godzilla fighting a big ass Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster. And they still do that kind of later on, though. That's yeah. Thing. But yeah, yeah. But they, uh, so yeah, they uh, get rid of, so they didn't have the rights to use Frankenstein, but they did in an earlier movie. So they didn't have the right to use Frankenstein. So they replaced it with King Kong and King Kong for some reason gets stronger off of electricity in this movie and then the fight really picks up yeah and that's the the famous scene if any of you have seen is the eat your broccoli uh kong literally just takes a tree and starts shoving it down godzilla's throat yeah and he swings him by his tail and everything and it is it's good yeah it's a it's a crazy time eventually uh, did they ever say who the winner is it kong that's the win it's or is kong's it- a winner he he's the one who emerges and they're just like okay bye kong as he's just like swimming away to go back to his home back to his house it's like you're not gonna send any ships out or anything to make sure he makes it all the way back to his island i mean it's a long way for a gorilla to swim yeah he'll be, he'll be fine he's got the monkey magic you know but he uh, made it back yeah monkey made it back that last fight when they're like at the pagoda at the coastline is intense because they're really going at it yeah and they just destroy the castle in the middle they're like oh it's yeah. like knocking the castle over oh my god yeah and it's funny too because Godzilla they both fall into the ocean at the end and Godzilla is just gone you're like oh where'd he go and it's like th- that's then where it leads off into the next film and stuff but overall it's a, it's a really fun time this is definitely a highly it's a required watch it's a, I would say. It's a classic um yeah John Carpenter said that this is one of his favorite Godzilla movies even though he thinks King Kong looks awful and he does he looks terrible in this movie but if you can get past that and all the other just corniness of it all 
it is such a fun movie. And oh, yeah. this is a movie that has been begged. They've been trying to remake this movie for so long. And now it's finally happening. <sighs> Dude, I'm so I'm so ready for it. Especially too. I'm like, all right. The first one is King Kong versus Godzilla and King Kong one. And obviously there's going to be that big monster. They, you know, they, they fight Mecha Godzilla or something, mutant yeah. or one of the two. And I'm just like, could we just, if the, if there is a winner, could it just be Godzilla this time? Could we just have Godzilla win? He also had two movies. I think he deserves to win. So that's just me. We'll though. see. Yeah. Cool. But, or they'll just Batman v Superman it. Oh, um, yeah. All right, so next on the list is a... Oh, we would highly recommend this movie, by the way. Well, we just said that. So anyway, the next on the list is Mothra versus Godzilla. This is, I think, the probably one of the most famous Godzilla movies because it's got the most popular suit. Mothra is his, like... Everybody, always, everybody knows who Mothra is, and it's... This is a really good one. This yeah. really is um it's not as campy or corny as the uh as king kong versus godzilla i think that it kind of balances the seriousness of the older movies while adding some fun to it with the monster action and everything um and mothra was already a pre-established character in her own movie before this so it's kind of like uh this was the original shared universe just like the universal monster movie so it was uh this is a good one yeah, and it, it it comes out three years after the original Mothra film too, mm-hmm. and this one is it's interesting because I mean like the same thing. God, it's similar. So Godzilla falls into the water, but he's like right next to a cliff. And mm-hmm. in Mothra vs Godzilla, he comes out of a construction site underground. Yeah, which is still close to the coastline. So I'd still I, I'd still say it's close enough. I think what happened was because there's that big typhoon or hurricane in the beginning. He gets kind of like washed ashore and like buried under a bunch of like landslides. And that's yeah. when he comes up. Yeah. It's sense. a good it's a good entrance, too. Yeah, it's got um, if I remember correctly, it's a journalist. She or she's a photographer. Yeah. who's trying to become a journalist. And they're like not taking her seriously because she's a woman, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Typical. Typical. I mean, it's also 60, it's not 64, so you can see like the, what they're yeah. trying to do there too. Yeah. And, you know, they find a piece of the egg, if I, or it's a piece yeah. of radiation. It's like a, yeah, it's just a weird like piece. And eventually it leads them to finding the Mothra twins. And, mm-hmm. you know, they want the egg back or else Mothra's going to attack. But and the then Godzilla cats. just shows up. Yeah. And, but the fat cats that are owning the construction site that are kind of behind a lot of all the greed of the film. Uh, want to kidnap the twins make money off of them and make money off of mothra because they're like oh we own the egg the egg is in our area so that's our egg that's our property and it's a lot of like anti company in the movie besides the monster fighting too so there's kind of two parallel storylines this time which is actually kind of i would say it's of the other movies so far this was probably the most deep in terms of human story yeah it's a critique of capitalism in this movie yeah greed um i have to say too i think that this is the music in this movie is great oh yeah so good because now you got a combo of all the classic godzilla stuff but now you also have the introduction of the mothra music too and having a mix together too is just fantastic and this is a movie i think james rolf uh you know who james rolf is right the angry video game nerd yes yeah, he's a huge Godzilla fan, and he re- when he reviewed this movie, he had like the perfect way of summing up Godzilla in this movie because he's just badass in this movie. Because he is. There's nothing that stops Godzilla in this movie. This is the one that showed he is indestructible. I think that is the biggest one because they try every kind of they call in like the they I think the American military comes in with like this brand new kind of missile. They try it on him. Godzilla doesn't even care. They try electrocuting him. They set traps for him. They do everything and nothing stops him in this movie. Not even Mothra. Yeah. And this is it's interesting, too, because this is also a turning point in show era as well. Yeah. Like the first four films. This is the final film where Godzilla is just a flat out villain. Yeah, and he's a bad after, guy in this movie. Yeah, he's still bad. Uh, and then after this, like things start to change, but we'll talk about that in the next movie. Mm-hmm. But this is like the probably the the least good you'll see him for a long time. Especially too, like at one point, I think he's heading to an island, and on that island is a field. Like everyone's not the island's pretty much uh, 
deserted except for a class field trip of students and it's like an all-female class so you have a lot of little girls and they're like oh no godzilla's gonna murder all these little girls yeah he's literally on the way to the island to go burn them all alive because he's godzilla yeah and you got like the old guy there that's like the children the children Mm -hmm. it's like you have to save the children but uh you have the whole plot of them trying to foil the rich people uh and it's really pretty violent too i remember when the the guy like beats the other guy's face and like the guy's all bloody and everything because they're fighting over that money in the hotel as godzilla's on his way yeah and the the skinny guy ends up shooting the fat guy yeah and then the skinny guy just gets crushed by godzilla anyway and it's just like ah there you go yeah so this is you get three mothers in this movie yeah, because you get the twin, you get the the two larva Mothras, and then you get the uh, older Mothra, and this the is the one that's film, pretty much. Yeah, it's like, Mothra just dies all the time in every movie. Yeah, that Mothra she's dies in. in too many, but yeah, this is like the original Mothra from the previous film. Yeah. That Mothra dies. You get the twins, and they they don't beat Godzilla necessarily. They like literally just web him up, and he falls into the water. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. So yeah, this I would highly recommend this one. This is a classic. This is one of the must sees. I say easily top ten Godzilla movies, top five actually, probably for this one. Really? Yeah, I would say that. Would you? Uh, I guess in terms of quality, um, it, for the show era specifically, mm-hmm. uh, but otherwise, I, I at least for my favorite films, it's probably not in there uh, personally. Mm. But just, that's just because I, I prefer the later. The modern uh, ones, not the necessarily the modern ones, but more the eighties, nineties, and the the Heisei era, and then the oh, um, the Heisei. Yeah, era that's so that's good. a whole that's a whole different thing. But yeah, that, well, we'll get, it, that'll be the next episode. We'll yeah. get to the Heisei era because that's the Heisei is my favorite too. Because I I grew up with those movies, so. Yeah. But I think you'll tell by my emotions uh, throughout this video when when we get to the later films here, uh, you'll see me kind of get more excited, and those are going to be the ones I'm really like. Those are my favorite Showa movies, but we'll yeah, get to them. yeah. So we both highly recommend this one too. And for the next one, this one is actually, it's technically not a Godzilla movie. It's just a movie that has Godzilla in it. And it, yeah. Ghidorah, the three headed monster. And this is kind of like the Avengers for the Godzilla movies, because you have Rodan who had also been, he had his own movie before this too, just like Mothra. You have Mothra again and you have Godzilla. And this is the first time you meet Godzilla's ultimate enemy king Ghidorah. yeah and it pretty much starts with like what was it the um is this the one with the uh magnetic field oh is it i can't I remember the, think... the campsite area where everything is like all the metals being flying over yeah because the meteorite landed nearby and that's where yeah that's where Ghidorah yeah. comes out right uh, yeah and the meteorite cracks open and got and king Ghidorah comes out oh it's so cool. This movie is this movie's awesome. And this yeah. this movie is a monster rumble at the end. The fight this is, is honestly, so good. This is the I would say Godzilla King of King of Monsters, the modern legendary film. This is that film. This is the it original is. version of that yeah, film. Yeah, King of the Monsters was a re, was like pretty much a direct remake of this movie. I think that this one does it a little bit better though, because we get more of fights between all the monsters that was something i was we'll, we'll get I to mean, that movie later because i like that godzilla and rodan are fighting uh, so, I yeah mean, that's kind of fights it's more of like a uh, two dudes laughing at each other chuckling throwing beer cans uh, that's like kind of what they're doing at I that mean, point yeah it's still good though <laughs> yeah no it's still good and it, it's interesting because it's like you know Ghidorah is like oh everyone's like oh god there's this massive monster we have to stop him and they get help again from the mother twins mm-hmm. and the mother twins are like there like mother's on tour like they're doing shows with mother and they're like it's actually great because they use it to answer a question where like one of the kids is like hey uh how is mother doing and stuff and they're like oh mother is like there's only one mother now the other one died and you're like oh my god one of the tw- one of the two baby mothers died apparently that's probably because of budget constraints <laughs> yeah yeah but the, there's just one larva mothra now, but it's still larva. And you eventually get to Godzilla and Rodan. And mm. they're in like separate places until they kind of meet up. And they are fighting each other. Quote unquote, fighting each other. And 
Mothra has to come because the they convince the twins like, hey, can you please help us? Like, can Mothra fight Ghidorah? And they're like, Mothra can fight Ghidorah. Mothra can't beat Ghidorah. Ghidorah will defeat oh, Mothra. Ghidorah just just destroys her in this yeah. movie. And uh, they're like, we need uh, the other monsters to work. And they're like, Godzilla, why would Godzilla and Rodan help? Like they, in the Rodan film, you know, like there's two Rodans and they just destroy everything until a volcano kills them and stuff. But like, this is a new Rodan. It's the first Rodan you see since then. Yeah, he, and... come, no, he comes out of a volcano in this movie. So yeah. it's, I think it's one of the ones from uh the first rodan movie oh that'd be awesome then i would if that's yeah because if you think about it he comes out of that volcano and everything so it's i think it is that wrote the one of the rodans ends up surviving and this is also the one where they start gearing it more towards kids because they make the monsters have more human traits and more uh they sound more like they're they're much more they're less animalistic in this movie i think yeah and this is also this is the turning point film where uh, Godzilla isn't necessarily good yet, but now he's gone from villain to kind of neutral. Like he's in the middle. He isn't necessarily good. Like the people aren't going like help us, Godzilla. He's an uh, anti-hero. Yeah, he's just like they're like oh god, there's worse monsters. Let's try to use this one to figure out how we can use this one to stop them. Yeah. And uh, that's that's said like if you look at it in a three section because the show era is so massive compared to the other eras it's got pretty much like three sub eras so there's the villain era kind of the neutral era i would say this is the start of the neutral era yeah and we get that for like three four films or so and then like with this one yeah godzilla and rodan are fighting mother tries to talk them down and trying to convince them to fight Ghidorah and save the earth and god's like this is interesting too because they have the twins translate from mother who's talking to them and finding out what they're saying mm -hmm. and you see them all kind of like godzilla's sitting talking and he's just kind of like rubbing his face and whatnot but they're like godzilla says that uh why would he want to help the humans all they do is try to attack him and do all these things to him and it makes it when they do this it's like oh god it makes it sound like godzilla feels like the humans are bullying him all the time and just being hella aggressive yeah they uh definitely aim this one a little bit more towards kids but it is still it's still a fun movie um yeah. i love this one this has got a really really great monster action at the end and i think that um this is another one that I think everybody should definitely check out. It's the introduction of one of Godzilla's greatest foes and one of the best Godzilla characters. And uh, that leads us to the next one, which is Invasion of the Astro Monster, also known as Godzilla versus Monster Zero. Oh, for sure. But also really fast, that fight, though. Like, mm -hmm. Mothra is on Rodan, and they're flying around using Mothra as, like, a, uh, a, a mobile yeah, mobile web cannon. So that was really cool. But all right. <laughs> That's a good one too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a uh, invasion of the Astro Monster, Godzilla versus Monster Zero. This is where you first meet the Exilians who come back later in the. They bring them back later in the series. Uh, this is kind of a repeat of Godzilla versus or uh, Ghidorah, the three-headed monster. It's minus. Definitely... It's just the same movie minus Mothra, pretty much. Yeah, I don't think they had the budget for Mothra in this movie, but this one's a lot of fun. Um, you get to see Godzilla kind of go back to his villainous roots because the aliens are controlling him. You get to see him destroying everything, and I love this Godzilla design in this movie. The suit. Um, I know it's called the Cookie Monster Godzilla. Uh, I have a real nostalgic feeling for this, and I really wish that SH Monster Arts or one of those ones would put out the a figure of the suit because I love this design the the drawing that's behind me and the on the video is uh based off that i did is based off of that suit so this yeah, is definitely I, like this I would say this one ironically too Ghidorah 300 monster was probably the third least seen on tv as well this yeah. one i saw much more often like i for a long time growing up i thought they were just the same movie and they just had different titles right I this one completely separate films this one, I remember first seeing it on uh, AMC and I remember recording that one and everything. And it was, um, this is a cool one too, because this is the only time in the series you see Godzilla fight on another planet. Yeah. yeah. Without, it's a good uh, fight. without oxygen. <laughs> yeah, no, well, he's Godzilla. He could do whatever he wants. 
And you start to see the first of the Godzilla moves too. Oh yeah, he's like kickboxing his way through, and then he does that dance at the end for yeah, no the, the reason. Jump, the jump celebration because he yes. beat Ghidorah. Yeah, and then uh, the the Exilian guy, he just goes a happy moment. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy too because obviously, yeah, it's the first aliens so far in Godzilla, and um, we get more like this is the opening salvo. We get more later uh, yeah. throughout the Showa era, but. These ones are their outfits are awesome. They got the antennas oh, yeah. on their heads and everything, and the suits. It, it looks like kind of it looks like tin foil almost. It's like tin foil yeah. suits. Yeah, oh, it looks, it's, it's so like a, what do we call them? Those thermal blankets, I guess. Those yeah, ones, those emergency thermal blankets. Yeah, and this is this one is sticks out too because this one uh, it has an American protagonist in it. Yeah. It's yeah, just the way, it, like he's the in only both one. versions. Yeah, yeah, he's in the the original Japanese version. Um, so that's interesting. And of course, you got the hot ass Exilian chick. Oh yeah, it that, turns uh, out his girlfriend's an Exilian the whole time. Oh uh, yeah, she's been undercover. So yeah, it was a. Uh, this is a good one. I I like this one too. It's uh, I don't think it's as necessary as Ghidorah the Three Headed Monster, but it's definitely a, a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's interesting too because this was more. It, it, they use this is one of the two brainwashing movies as well, or like yeah. uh, mind control, because the whole thing is like, oh, can the aliens come and the humans are like, what do you want? And they're like, oh, there's a monster attacking us. Can we borrow yours to uh, take care of it? And they're like, wait, so you'll get rid of our, we'll, you'll solve our monster problem, and that's helping you, and that's basically us helping you. And they're like, yeah, and so the humans are like. Yeah, yeah, take take them. So yeah, you have Godzilla and Rodan go to space, and they leave them there, and they're just like, "Do you think they'll be all right on an asteroid that has nothing on it?" And they just get uh, brainwashed, and it turned out Ghidorah was a ploy the whole time that they yeah. had control of Ghidorah previously. So they use all three of them to destroy everything until the humans are able to knock out the mind control device that they have, causing. Ghidorah to wake up and go, wait, I'm still bad and still destroy yeah. things. And then Godzilla and Rodan team up to fight him one more time. And dude, I love the end. Got Rodan's just like, I got it. And just lifts up Godzilla, throws him at Ghidorah and they both fall into the water. Ghidorah flies away into space again. And uh, you're just like, okay. that's the Yeah, end of the you're left thinking Godzilla might be dead in this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is another good one. Uh, definitely recommend it. And I think that brings us to the next one, which was Ebra, the Horror of the Deep, or also known as... Oh, one more thing, though. I like that. I love the name Monster Zero for King Ghidorah, and I'm glad that they brought Monster Zero, the Monster Zero name back. For, and they called uh, Godzilla Monster 1 and Rodan Monster 2. Yeah. yeah, but I think Monster Zero was a good code name for them to bring back in uh, King of the Monsters for King Ghidorah. I, I thought that was cool. So the next one is Godzilla versus the Sea Monster. This was another one that was originally written for King Kong. And you can tell that in the movie because they wake Godzilla up with electricity, even though that was all the way originally meant for Frankenstein. Um, and then Godzilla has like this crush on a native girl in the movie. It's, you know, he's a good guy. He doesn't, yeah. he just, he doesn't do it. He, hey, this is where, you know, Godzilla is a gentleman compared to Kong, where Kong just straight up steals women against their will. Godzilla doesn't even put a hand on them. He's just like, hey, I'm just here helping you out. Eh, I guess. You know, he just, just saying. Just, just saying. creepily stares at them. Hey, man, they, they have a photo together later and it's very sweet. I'm just, it is. I, I'm just, yeah. But um, this was my first Godzilla movie. Really? This, this is my is first, the first one that I ever saw all I the bought. way through. Yeah. My, I have uh... this one on VHS, the oh, actual okay. VHS of it. Um, I remember buying it. It's got like, Godzilla shooting fire at the sea monster. It's a very colorful cover. Mm -hmm. um, it's got like also it's um what do you call it when it's um part of the it's bumpy. It's like a bumpy cover. Um, oh yeah, so it's kind of three D. Yeah, so you can like feel the cover. And it's like really cool. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This is the one I first saw all the way through. I remember I still have my VHS recording of it. Um, I know this isn't a favorite among a lot of fans. A lot of fans don't really like this movie. I love it. Uh, I think this it's mainly because of nostalgia. Of yeah. yeah, it's so fun. It's again, it's that same Godzilla design I really like. Um, Mothra's in it, but barely. It's it's interesting too because 
it, it is so unique. This is your first non-military Godzilla movie. This is where there's no military. We're not at a city at all. Yeah. Like even in where he goes to space, he's still at a city afterwards. It's just an island. And it's a lot more interesting too, because it's just like dudes that are like, hey, I want to rescue my brother. They end up like running into a thief who's stolen a shit ton of money. And the human well, parts of the story are hilarious. They're I love so watching good. it. Yeah. And they get like, you know, they, they get into the storm. The dude like takes them without them knowing at night. And it's like, hey, we're, we're into the ocean now. They like wash up on the shore and find out there's a private mill, basically like a PMC company there. Like a, I forget what they were. If it was like an illegal They're like a terrorist organization. Yeah. Or the Red Dragons. The, if I remember yeah. Correctly. The Red Bamboo. Red Bamboo. Red Bamboo. That's what it was. Yeah. And they got like a whole setup of a base and stuff that the break in and they get separated. And one of the, like one of them winds up on Mothra Island and like he finds his brother and you have like all these people trying to get Mothra to come and rescue yeah. all of their people that were, they have like people that get taken by the red bamboo. Yeah. They're used as, they use them as slaves. And then Godzilla's in a rock and all is like buried in some rocks in the Island. All of this while there's a j- giant ass lobster off the coast of the thing that's like killing people that try to get off the island and the only way to stop it is they use the natives to produce a kind of like a pheromone that keeps the lobster away yeah and it's really cool because it gets clever uh one of the dudes that's on the ship gets captured and thrown with the slaves and he's like wait why would we do this for them and they're like what do you mean that's their only choice it's like what if we trick them and make it so their ships don't actually work, and they use a uh, fake or they use uh, fake pheromones, yeah. and the stuff they use isn't working. So eventually, like the ship gets, to, they're like, "Oh, we can get them the lobster to kill them instead, so then they won't come back." Yeah. And it's really cool because, you know, it when Godzilla wakes up and finally starts like doing stuff. First, they they somehow have a full air force to uh-huh. fight him. And then there's a giant bird also. Oh, yeah, there's a bird in this movie. Yeah, there's a giant bird that goes to attack the uh, female lead. And Godzilla saves her from it. And then the jets come and he's just like, oh, okay. And the best part, too, he's just, he sits there. And it's just like kind of scratching his nose and doing like his Godzilla breathing. He's like, Ugh. and she's just like, she just kind of hangs out with him. And it's just like, I- I'm just here. Yeah, she doesn't right. know what to do. I love the way they refer to Ebra as like that mammoth lobster or whatever. It's like, oh, that's so hilarious. And yeah. that's one of the things I wanted to bring up too is that the dubbing in the dubbing for this movie for the original VHS copy is amazing. I love it. It is so good. We are friends. And, friends. Yes. <laughs> and they ruin it in the DVD re-release and the Blu-ray release of of the movie because they redub it and they did this with a lot of the Showa era movies and the dubbing is awful. It's terrible. I'm so glad I still have the VHS. I need a VHS uh, for to watch that again. I I have a digital copy of the original VHS. Ooh. Nice. And it's I have it on my computer. I will not tell you where I got it, but I we'll talk about this after. But Sounds good. that dubbing is so much better on the the original one than the uh than the new ones. And that's something that disappoints me about a lot of the re-releases of the show is that they've redubbed a lot of the movies and they're not very good. I would agree with that. And I will say too, the, it's funny when you think about it, when he is staring at her, this is like the only, this is the first time you actually have Godzilla having an actual one-on-one with a person. You don't yeah. actually see him have a close up where he's interacting. Like, yeah, he's chasing that woman in king congress is godzilla but he's not really chasing. he's just walking and she's running away he's not he's yeah give two shits about her this one he's literally like hello there uh and the the fight between him and the sea monster too is it's really cool because you have an underwater fight yeah we didn't and, this is the first time we saw godzilla in an underwater battle yeah and you have this awesome music playing that's like uh very tense because there's a the red bamboo they're trying to escape the island now that they realize godzilla's there and he yeah. literally makes very short work of their base like they're it's like oh that base daunting. destruction scene is so good when he it's, destroys their military it's amazing base. and the it's funny because all the humans there you know the heroes are trying to uh survive against the red bamboo and they can't they're like oh my god they are superior weapons everything we can't do anything when you have godzilla come it's like oh this is funny you know i used yeah. to be the military and this is like a step down and he makes quick work of them 
And so the Rabu and Boo, they're trying to get escape, and that's when the boat gets destroyed by the lobster. But they set the island, they have the island set to self destruct the entire island. Oh, yeah. And apparently, it's enough that it could kill Godzilla if he stays on it or anything else. But, like, you know, the this is where it gets really cool because you have the underwater fight. And at the same time, Mothra arrives and the natives that were there uh-huh. uh, that were captive build a giant net that Mothra can lift them into the air with them. In like 10 minutes. Island. Yeah. And it's there. It's just the power of native craftsmanship works yeah. so well. And let me say this. The way Godzilla beats Ebra the lobster is brutal. He rips his claws off. He, he rips one claw off, but he... Uh, no, he, he rips two of them off, because remember, he's holding one of them in his mouth, and he's holding the other one in his hand? Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. he tears both of his claws off. And he just starts snapping at it with him. He uses the claw. He just uses his own claw to snap back at the lobster as the lobster runs away. So, like, Vera never actually dies, but he's just like, I'm, yeah. I'm out. Uh, peace that, out y'all. and the, the scene where they wake up Godzilla... And you see, like, when he's in the rocks and they use the lightning to wake him up, and you see his spikes glow up and his eye open. Oh, it's, it's so good. So good. When, and then he, like, climbs out of the mountain. It's so awesome. Dude, I love, too, using that the picture of him when he's just down and out in the rocks. I'm like, mood. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. But so, yeah. yeah um, it's also the only Godzilla film with surfing music in it. That's oh, place, yes. Too. That it's, too. It's, such a, it's such a fun it's, psychedelic. It's just a rat. It's a ratted movie, man. This is the per- is bodacious. This it's is a- such a it's the I would highly recommend this as your Godzilla summer movie. Yes, this is a perfect movie to like sit down with friends and have a beer and uh, maybe smoke a joint and yeah. just sit there and watch it because it's that funny. It's so good. Yeah. So Highly recommend this one too. It is one of the more corny ones. I know some fans don't like it, but we both love it. So moving on next is another one that I, one that a lot of people don't see very often and that's Son of Godzilla. Yeah. This, um, uh, still an island. Yeah. Just so this is like, I think they different. call it the, the Island Trilogy or whatever these ones are called. Oh, cause after that it's, uh, I guess technically, yeah. Yeah. Um, this one's it's it's fun. It's a fun yeah. movie. Not requ- it's, it's not required. Definitely, uh-huh. it's just kind of it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. There's some cute moments with where you see Godzilla as a father, and it's definitely this one's definitely a kids movie. It's very much so aimed towards kids. Yeah, and they instead of having kind of like regular monsters, it's giant bugs for the most yeah. part. I and, love uh, I love uh, Kumanga and Kamagiris and everything. Those they're great uh, villains for Godzilla. Oh yeah, the and giant mantis and everything. The it's interesting too here because it's like you know there there's a native woman there who isn't really native. She was part of a shipwreck and she just kind of survived ever since. Yeah, she looks and, good for being on that island for so long. Yeah, she's it's like, hey, you survived all right, okay. Uh, but you know you have an island research team and they are trying to manipulate the weather, which is crazy. Yeah. Like uh, they have a weather machine. And eventually, yeah, they find the native girl and they also run into the uh, Kamagiris's. And, or is it Kamagiris's or is it Kamagira? I don't even know how to do the plural for them. Yeah. But they run into them and they run into Minya. And like you see Godzilla later on, but they're just like, oh, who's this little guy? And he just like, uh, I think he has a relationship with the. Uh, yeah. Because uh, she feeds him or whatever. Yeah. She kind of helps him out and stuff. And, and he, he is the ugliest i hate minya with a passion i, I hate the hate, way i've always hated minya it's the design of them that this i is hate the start of the minya trilogy actually when uh, you think about it but i hate Min- minya he's like it's not it's not so much him that i hate it's his design it's like his he design, is so and then you ugly. watch godzilla's revenge and you hear his oh, voice yeah, in english that, and you want to stab him but that's oh yeah awful. That, that that's awful that's, that's a, i don't that's even consider like, that movie canon we'll, we'll get to that event then we'll get to that in a couple movies but uh yeah. this is it's it's cool it's like there's not much to say with the characters they just kind of do yeah. the weather stuff and then the monsters come in they are two giant mantises as we've mm-hmm. said and uh eventually like minia tries to fight them he can't and godzilla fights them and they show like there's this area it's like what is it a kind of giant um a plateau i guess Mm -hmm. or a valley or something like that and it's just like oh it's in there it's like oh you don't want to go in this area you have to be very quiet there's a monster that lives beneath there called kumunga and if he gets out like he'll destroy everything here 
and Kumanga is a great kaiju. I love. Yeah, Kumanga. he's literally a giant spider. Yeah, he's a and giant tarantula. He, he like uh, I don't even remember like if Minya does Minya fight just the Kamigiris or do he also fight uh, Kumanga? I don't remember. Um, but we do get to see in this movie. We get to see firsthand that Godzilla straight up an abusive dad. Because like oh, he, yeah. oh, Minya's born, he hatches out of an egg, and then Godzilla just hits him with his tail, and then walks away, leaves him there to die, and then eventually comes back, and then there's like a t- bunch of times where like he threatens to hit his own son and everything, and then uh... and also this is like the worst God show a Godzilla suit. I hate the suit so much. It's so yeah. ugly. It's also I I just. If I was Godzilla, I just wouldn't have come back. I'd be like, oh, uh, this is what came out. I'm going to yeah. see you guys. Sorry. We'll but, do better next time. And this movie honestly ends on kind of a sad note, though, because the island, they finally, with the weather control machine, it makes the island freeze over. Yeah. And there's that part with Minya in the snow where he's, like, shivering to death. And Godzilla walks over and, like, puts his arms around him. And they just sit there and they freeze yeah. pretty much together. And, like, it shows him, like, frozen on the island. But it kind of works in there. So that, that's the whole thing, too. They use the weather machine and they're like, oh, what do they do with them next? This is how they relocate them to uh, Monster Island eventually. Oh, is that how they do it? Yeah. I always thought that that was Monster Island and they just it's... eventually built the base there. They could have. It's one of the yeah. two. I, I don't know, but because I did. Was there a volcano on that one? Because there is a volcano on Monster Island. I think there is because I know there is in the Godzilla video ge- in the Save the Earth video game from Atari. Okay. There's always a there, volcano. There's on one in Destroy All Monsters on Monster Island. I just couldn't remember if there was one in this. Yeah, there there is there is one. Yeah. Oh, they can then they might have done that and then that's yeah. how they start building things around it. But so uh, this one, um, I would say if you have kids, you know, definitely like this is a kid friendly Godzilla movie. It's a lot of fun. It's not required though if you, you really want to see everything, unless you're a completionist. Like yeah, I've or, seen this probably out of all the Godzilla films. This is the one I've seen the least amount of. Like honestly, once or twice. Yeah, I've only seen it once. It was on Turner Classic Movies one time, and I was like, I've never seen it before. I should watch it. Um, it's a cute movie though, but uh, yeah. I hate Minya. <laughs> I hate he's yeah. such a. I had a. I was working at a convention, and uh, one of the commissions, a guy asked me to draw was Minya and oh, I just realized I was like oh and I was sitting there drawing him and I was like oh I forgot how ugly he is I, I it's one of those two movies where I'm like I prefer seeing the humans over the monsters in this <laughs> yeah I'd rather stare at the hot ass native chick than Minya anyway so uh next on the list is destroy all monsters this is this is a good one and this is the all-star monster battle this is the end game of godzilla it was this was meant to be the last of the showa era but then they got greedy was it actually supposed to be the last of the show era yeah i think it was supposed to be the last godzilla movie ever originally and it takes place in 1999 even though it doesn't really look like 1999 and you get godzilla it mainly focuses on godzilla but you get plenty of other monsters that get plenty of action. You we know, could tell you, tell you the whole roster. I, I mean, want me to go? I could do the whole roster if we want, real fast. Do it. All right. So we got Godzilla. We got his terrible son Minya. Yeah. We got Mothra. We got Rodan. It's still Larva Mothra specifically. Yes. Uh, so we got the big four there. We of course got Anguirus. So this is finally we get Anguirus again after since like Godzilla raids again. This is the first. Time is this the him first again. time? That yeah. We've seen and he's got updated suit now too. Um, wow, I didn't back. realize that. Yep. We also have a bunch of monsters from other movies. So going down the line here, we got Gorosaurus, who is from King Kong Escapes. He's like I a love Gorosaurus. Rex almost like monster. And he's got a cool drop kick, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, there is Baragon from Frankenstein uh, Conquers the World or uh, Frankenstein versus Baragon. I think those the two titles for it. Yeah. And you've got Varen from the movie Varen the Unbelievable. That movie sucks ass. Don't watch it uh but he's there he just kind of floats around a bit you've got uh amanda from atragon uh which is a really interesting underwater crazy empire movie with submarines and stuff and you have kumunga so you have all these monsters on an island and then you have Ghidorah as well and it's really cool because they're all besides Ghidorah, they're all living on the monster island together now and yeah. the humans just kind of have it all contained and uh there's like a whole there's there's a staff on the island they have a facility yeah. on the island 
and there's like a field that they don't allow the monsters to leave from but yeah. they can kind of stay within the area like i think rodan eats like dolphins and stuff or something oh yeah it just shows him eating dolphins and shit in this movie yeah and there's a scene where godzilla tries to leave and there's like a literally an exposition video at the beginning of this movie giving you a tour of the island and okay this this movie looks good too it looks really clean I don't know if that, that makes any sense. Just with Godzilla's look and everything. Everything looks very... This, I think, is the best looking out of the Showa era movies. Yeah. As far as just the way it's shot, the cinematography and everything. It feels very modern in that sense. And there's also... Um, <laughs> there's a scene I love, especially in the American dub, where the the girl goes up to like get the phone call from her boyfriend that's up on the moon. And she's just like, oh, where are you? He's just like, I'm at the moon base it's yeah. so hilarious it's great it's too because it's a conversation where it's a woman on monster island and a man on the moon talking like everything's normal oh yeah and the human part of this movie is actually a lot of fun you know with the yeah. aliens and the the secret agents and everything in this you movie. have the lunar ladies who are yeah. like the, uh, key lock. the key yeah the key lock and yeah. so you get to, all these aliens in godzilla movies are these hot ass chicks that come down to invade earth it's and, great and there, this is the this is the second uh mind control movie so this was the, oh, the yeah. second one here and it's really cool because you know you have everyone on monster island and there's this like this important doctor guy who's like in charge of the facility and stuff yeah. and they all get like taken out by this knockout gas but the knockout gas doesn't even just take them out it takes out all the monsters and that's when the key locks come in and put them all under mind control and they let the monsters out and the monsters just start the monsters start destroying the planet like just all oh, major yeah. cities they're in like Prague, yeah you see moscow everything. new york yeah um you see gorosaurus Tokyo. destroying paris you see uh godzilla is in new york in this movie destroying yeah it. i it's... think it's like godzilla amanda and one other monster like over yeah. there and then there's uh, that great fight between godzilla amanda and a couple other monsters in uh tokyo yeah and they're not even, they're not fighting each other it's just like they're fighting all the military stuff yeah it's so and, good and the music's really good in this movie too and they're trying so hard to like uh because it's pretty much like they could stop the people from being mind controlled but yeah. they just kind of don't so they're like killing all the scientists that are fighting back against them the whole time except yeah. for the uh female lead when they finally like get her free of the control by like yeah. literally ripping the, they don't they take... rip her earlobes open. Yeah, it's like oh god, there's so much. She's like oh my god, I'm bleeding. And it's like don't worry, you're safe now. And it's like yeah, I yeah, th- there's actually a good human action in this movie. Now that I think about it, yeah, uh, a lot of there's a lot of shootouts and stuff like that. It's is a this is a good one. That's I think I think this out of the Showa era, other than. Uh, I think he's easily another top five. It, out it's, of the show I would, era. it's a highly, re- it's a required just because of the roster lineup alone. Yeah. It's just like that awesome Royale movie. And, you know, like eventually they solve the thing with the key locks and they destroy their mind control and mm. they try to break into the key lock area too, which has amazing music. It's like the, they're uh, drilling music when they're trying to take it down. It's like yeah. such a great two minute soundtrack or two minute OST. Oh, and so stupid. But it's, it's so good. So good. And there's because there's like a laser drill yeah. that they're using and stuff. But when you finally get to the fight, and this is actually to the fight itself, Ghidorah comes down and it's like, oh, there's like 10 monsters here. Ghidorah's going to fight all of them. And at first, like he does kind of like start kicking their asses. They like some of them are kind of going left and right. And at one point, like Angiris gets onto Ghidorah's neck and like Ghidorah lifts him and Angiris you just see him fall into the ground and you're just like oh god Angiris but yeah. once Ghidorah gets down it literally just becomes half it's it becomes over half a dozen monsters literally just kicking the shit out of Ghidorah I it's know, like it's at first he's cool and they're just all kicking him and you're just like this is a fight <laughs> yeah, Ghidorah it's, gets it's not fair to the point where Minya even gets kills in because like he suffocates him with his little smoke blast and yeah. just comes and tightens his neck and he's like, oh, I'm dead. I always felt bad that Ghidorah had to go down like that. But it was cool oh, that yeah. he shows up in the end because you're not expecting it. Um, you want to throw on a light in your room so we can yeah, see Yeah, I was going to definitely. <laughs> yeah. So let's just take a quick breather here before we go on to the next one. Um, oh, God. Starts going downhill from here. 
Yeah, I wasn't sure if you could. Uh, I was I was trying to find a good stopping point in between, like right after we finished this movie. But uh, yeah. I don't know if you could see it. I got a Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla two poster on my closet over there. Right under. Oh, that's uh, Last a good Crusade. one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, so yeah, we both highly recommend this movie. Um, I think yeah, top five Godzilla movie for sure, and uh, at least for the Showa era. But. Uh, and I love that title, Destroy All Monsters. It's such Destroy a cool all, title. There's no alternate titles for this one. It's just it's no. the same English and Japanese. Yeah. And yeah, the key, also the Keylock has got classic flying saucers pretty much. They're just like yeah. there's fire dragons and stuff where you're it's, like fire dragon. It's like really cool. It is the quintessential sci-fi movie. Yeah. And I think that brings us to the next one. So we'll say a little history lesson as we move on to the next one. Oh God! Um, this was supposed to, like I said before, this was supposed to be the last of the Godzilla movies. But then, money, so they decided to make more Godzilla movies on a lower budget and kind of gear them towards kids, I guess, and just make them really cheap and not very good. So the first one we got was Godzilla's Revenge, which is just, I think it's officially the worst Godzilla movie ever made. It's also, I think, the Japanese uh, title is All Monsters Attack. Yeah. And it is literally, the movie itself is just a bowling PSA. That's yeah. all it is. And it's, oh my God, it's it's a it's a movie. And this is where the stock footage comes in. Yeah, so they, they it's like, all right, there's a kid living in the real world. And he's like, you know, he th- there's Godzilla, but Godzilla doesn't exist. It's like actual real world stuff. And... He uh-huh. gets bullied by kids from his school. He feels like his friends like Godzilla or his son Minya is really. And he'll just keep like, he'll come home and like his dad and mom are always working. So he's usually home alone a lot or like his neighbor kind of helps him out a bit. But he uses his imagination to go into Monster Island and he talks to Minya. And this one, if you want to watch it, I, this is the two, re- two requirements here for this film. Requirement number one, watch it in English. Because of Minya's voice alone, it's just the most ridiculous shit. I'm gonna do this. Oh voice. hi there! Oh hi there! My Minya, my dad's Godzilla. Uh, and the other, because you're gonna hear this. Requirement number two: drink tons of alcohol with this movie. You yeah. must drink with this film, otherwise you're gonna lose your mind. But when you do or, drink, it, you'd be like, oh my god. Or I got a better idea: just don't watch it. Or just don't watch it. That's another. Yeah. That's a good idea. Because I, I remember as a kid, this movie kept coming on, and I was so sad. Where I was like, "Why is this the movie that's yeah. coming on right now?" And I'm, I'm I, just, I didn't even like this as a kid. You yeah, know? no, it, I, I didn't like it. I, it. I this is yeah. definitely the worst Godzilla movie. Yeah, and uh, you know, because usually most Godzilla movies, I would always consider good. This is like one of the few where I'm just like, kill it. Kill yeah it. it's not good at all it's very it's very lazy it's very feels much like a cash grab like i said most of it is um the only new content footage. is really yeah is human stuff too yeah the human the stuff even isn't even that great it's not good at all and then the uh the monster design for gabra is the new villain that they introduced is really really stupid and he's gonna laugh it's like ah! yeah he's really annoying he's just an ugly looking design nothing about this movie is is this good yeah it's uh it's funny too because it's like the whole thing is minya is uh he's trying to learn how to be a man from his dad and like stick (laughs) up for himself so he goes to like he does a crazy thing where he's like human sized and then he can do like a he goes yeah 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 and then he like gets into a uh uh a massive monster size and he goes to like fight gabara and he actually does a good job at certainly like first he gets his ass kicked and then he goes to fight gabara and he wins, but then Gabara gets back up and like is a total asshole. So then Godzilla's got to step in, and kick the shit out of him. But that's pretty much the only stuff with the monsters. Like that's really it. There's not much else with it. Like at certain points, they have stock footage of Godzilla. They have stock footage of the uh, Abir Horror, the deep movie, and Son of Godzilla movie. Uh, they use the stuff where he fights the jets and the giant bird. They, mm-hmm. I think, I don't think, I, I can't remember if they use the sea monster or not. Yeah, they, they do. Bear. They use okay. them in the fight. They use the final battle. They use both battles, actually. They use the uh, Kamagiris battle uh, yeah. with the Mantises. Even if the Godzilla suits don't match. They don't. When you, it's funny as a kid, you won't notice it. But when you get older, you're looking. And whenever they use the stock footage, you're realizing Godzilla looks completely different in certain yeah. scenes. And you're like, 
wait a minute and you just think if you look at that movie back then when it came out just imagine how people were in theaters being like yeah i wonder if they even know i'm so curious to know it's like did people even notice it's pretty obvious even i notice as a little kid that it's very very obvious um yeah this is a bad one don't watch it there's also home alone aspects where you have basically the sticky band, oh, the wet yeah. bandits that come in and in real life, he has to like fight them and then they get arrested, but it's mm. just so comedically ridiculous and dumb. And it's like, Oh, these two guys kidnapped this kid and took him to like an abandoned place. And he has to like figure out ways to take him out. But it's like, it's not like home alone where it's like, that's the whole movie. This is like a five minute sequence at a certain point. And I like how uh, the message for the movie, instead of anti-bullying, is beat the shit out of your bully. Yeah, and the then end. they'll be your friend after, depending on who it is. Because, yeah. you know, he, be, he he pushes that kid at the end, and he's like, oh, oh. And he goes to the painter, who's just a regular guy doing an honest living, and he knocks him over and gets him covered in paint to look cool in front of his friends. If anything, this movie turns you into a bully to look cool. <laughs> Oh, uh, this movie's bad. Don't watch it, guys. Don't watch it's, it. Yeah, the music's really bad, too. Just um, watch, I would say, watch a beer twice uh, instead of watching this. I'd rather watch the 1998 Godzilla movie than this one. No, I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I actually enjoy that movie, but that's a different story. I I, 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 I don't think it's a bad movie. It's, it's a problem. It's, it's called it's Godzilla. Not a God, well, it's not a good Godzilla movie. Don't worry, guys. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, guys. We're, we're going to review that one. So... So I, I just want to say this is all right. I know you say like cash grab and then it should have ended there, but this is where this is where I really got into Godzilla. This is where I love the shit out of these movies, and I'm just like more, more, give me more. These are my favorites of the Showa era that we're about to get into. Are you For serious? Sure. I am dead serious. I love these movies. Okay, well the next one is Godzilla versus Hedorah. This is guys. This is it. This is Godzilla takes on environmentalism. This is Godzilla okay. versus pollution. The movie. I. This is all right, guys. If you want to go for green, clean energy, you should watch this movie. We're gonna we're gonna have some disagreements with this movie. This movie is so weird, and it's so it's, it's so very psychedelic. psychedelic. It's very yes. psychedelic. It's very weird, but it's also disgusting. I mean, it's just yeah, like it's pretty gross. I, I I get very I'm like, yeah. why are you doing this together? It's Whoa. actually scary in some parts too. Like, there's these weird car anime style cartoons that that pop up in the middle. Oh, you of don't it. like that? I love those. That was that was really cool. They're I thought really those... weird looking. And then oh, there's man. the there's like these brutal scenes of like Hedora like melting the skin off of these people's faces and everything. And then you get the. Uh, the movie is actually pretty terrifying, and even though that it kind of seems like they're trying to aim it towards kids, but they're kind of not. And then there's this the music, and then Gidor and Hedora is just some weird shit monster that shows up to, as James <laughs> Wolf calls him, a just. The whole thing is too strange, and I I do like the way Godzilla. The people say that this is Godzilla as an environmentalist. It's so so okay. This is where. I don't know if you want to say it at like Son of Godzilla or Destroy. I think this is the movie where now you've had the neutral arc. The neutral era has ended. This is the hero. Oh, era. yeah. He's a superhero. Uh, this now. is actually where I uh, that's why my favorite. It's my favorite era of the show. Era. The, my favorite sub era of the show era is the hero era. This is like where I got really into it. Um, Palmer, this is why don't you like anything good? I don't just I, I try not to consider the original as part of the Showa. It's kind of like its own thing because it's yeah, such a, it's, it's, so it's a different. film. Yeah. So I don't consider it the top five of Showa for me because I just it's in a different camp completely. This yeah. movie is definitely in my top five. And I, I just don't, <laughs> don't judge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty much four out of five of the these movies are in my top five. And along with the beer, I would say not even Destroy All Monsters is in my top five because of these movies. Really? You know, I love these. I love these movies. You don't understand. Okay. And I, I just, okay, so this movie, like, you have a monster that constantly evolves throughout the movie, and you have these awesome animations, and it's completely different than anything we've seen before. And the animations are honestly really cool, and yeah, it's it can be scary as a kid. As a kid, I love this. I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. He's fighting this crazy monster, and the uh, Japanese one is called Godzilla vs. Hedorah. A American one is called Godzilla versus the Smog Monster, mm-hmm. and I mean, obviously, you know, pollution right there is Smog Monster. Yeah, and the whole thing is like, uh, Hydra came from the, I think it was like the nuclear plants or like some form of 
the pollutants that were happening there. Yeah, and he started he off as a tadpole. Yeah. yeah, he started as a tadpole that kind of evolved. So this is a weird like mutant frog monster that was like uh, caused by evolution, just like a frog. But you know, frogs evolve over time. They take that whole aspect for Hydra, and first he's like this weird little uh, underwater creature that kind of like poisons the main family's father who's like the scientist he just kind of like gets like weird sea poisoning from it and he's he gets, like, like half much... his face burned off yeah he's like out of commission for nearly the whole film and the kid somehow the monster comes out of the water and flies over the kid the kid like literally runs a knife through it as it flies through which is like really dope and uh it, it's got like i said it's a full psychedelic thing like the music's really dope and they uh over time show the monster flying and it's got like a, an a aerial form that it just goes through but when it flies through it spreads its pollution and some people literally just turn into skeletons like a guy's on a power line doing something and it flies over him and he's just like ah, and falls over and there's just the skeleton and clothing and we're just like i remember the last time i just recently screened it a bit ago and we're all just like i, for, I forgot how it was like that and i'm just like oh it's literally a skeleton and clothing <laughs> but uh, they eventually have like uh, people are finding out about it and they're like how do we stop it oh we can't really and Godzilla's coming and the kid's got like a weird ESPN uh, Godzilla sense if I remember correctly he's like oh Godzilla's gonna come he's gonna help us and that's yeah. actually why it is really fun for kids because you have that Godzilla connection with the child and that's i know you really don't like this but this is where th these are the things i really enjoyed about it and the the crazy two thing is this is the one time you literally see average people attempting to just like fight a monster to death like literally it's like oh this is our last thing we're gonna do before we die let's go out fighting because all of the young people are like oh god this monster is coming and it's gonna kill us all and it's in it's like its final form it's just some it's giant literally the ball. it's literally the younger generation fighting for the environment and everything it's it's uh they literally throw torches at it until they all die yeah it's a weird movie and it's very very strange i guess maybe check it out just if you're curious um i definitely wouldn't say that it's a, a very good godzilla movie i don't think it's that great it is though. I will say the one, the first time that Godzilla and the military work together, because it is Godzilla yeah. is trying to fight it and it keeps using its pollutant stuff. It's literally like burning him, and like at one point he actually loses. He can't see out of his eye. Like he's oh yeah, down he one loses eye. his eye. Yeah, and uh, the military creates a heat conductive like using the electricity from power lines. Yeah, and Godzilla uses it to uh, as a. It has these crazy mirrors that Hydra would go in between, and they just fry him. Mm -hmm. And Godzilla uses that to basically just like fry. Uh, he it, it, the power doesn't work, so he fires at the mirrors and creates the electricity himself to take it out. And it, it's just so he just curb stomps Hedora. Yeah, he curb stomps it, and he also this is where flying Godzilla comes in as oh, well. Oh God, I you forgot about this that. This is why this is the best. This is the stuff I love, man. I love from the show. Oh, this is fantastic. It's so he, he literally grabs his tail and goes like in a kind of like a, a ball form sort of and he fires his atomic blast and he starts flying backwards and propels himself into the air and it's like a, like a an awesome song that's like bum, 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 bum. Oh, and Godzilla's movie. chasing it crashes into Hyder takes him out Hyder's honestly I would say out of all the show era monsters I would say Hyder is probably my number two monster honestly in the show era yeah I think so. But yeah, dude, Ghidorah's not my top three at all. <laughs> I don't like know number, about you, Conrad. Ghidorah's my number five, man. Really? Yes. Right, the Ghidorah's other, the other four, that low? Yeah. Yeah. So you uh, have Ghidorah I, over King Ghidorah. Yes. Yes. Easily. Uh, for myself. I know it's crazy, but yeah, that I I really like this film. It, it it does so much stuff that's different. They do a lot of things that change it, and it doesn't feel like the same old thing. It really just kind of re it. I want to say honestly, it revives it into a new thing in general that we see in the next movies. That I I were the next one. Uh, I'll the I'll next give it, ones we're getting into. Oh my god, I'm so I'll, excited. I'll give this movie this. It's a perfect movie to like I said, smoke a joint and sit down with your friends and watch. Maybe drunk and it, it's different. And I'll I'll say check it out if you're curious. But I don't think that it's a very good Godzilla movie. But I would highly recommend it personally. Like okay. I would say, watch. This maybe movie. maybe I need to rewatch it sometime and see. But I, I this was never one of my 
favorite ones. But anyway, I think we got to move on. I know that Comron recommends this. I don't really, unless you're morbidly curious. But next to Godzilla versus Gigan. It's better than Godzilla versus Hedorah. I don't think that it's still that great, though, even though I love Gigan. I think Gigan's a great design. And this character. is my favorite show era film. Are you shitting me? I am dead serious. Are you shit? Come I'm dead serious, dude. This is it's... your favorite one? Yeah, really? this is my favorite one. Yeah. It's got, dude, it's got you so gotta much. You gotta be shitting me. I am dead serious. And like I said, guys, I'm not considering, I'm not counting the original film in this. This is okay, like yeah, I, I get everything that, after. That's in a league of its own. But you still have Mothra versus Godzilla, you know, yeah. destroy all monsters, Godzilla versus Monster Zero, and this one? Yeah. If we even got a couple good movies that come after this. Dude, it is a best friend tag team battle against two monsters, one of which, honestly, Gigan is my number one monster of the show era. Gigan is my number one. And Hedorah is your number two. Okay, I'll give you yeah. Gigan, but really? Yeah. Okay, justify this to me, Comron. <laughs> Okay, so you have Godzilla and Anguirus on Monster Island, and it's got the craziest stuff. Like, oh this my is, god, I forgot they talk in this movie. They talk. They oh, talk in this movie. Oh, it's so stupid. Like, Why do they talk? Because it's freaking awesome, dude. It, it's <sighs> okay. There's different. This is the thing with Godzilla that everyone needs to understand. There's so many aspects of it that you can kind of tell between me and Danny, or Danny and I, uh, that they're honestly is probably a lot of sub factions of Godzilla fans just like there's like people that like only the Showa era people that only like the Heise era people that I don't think there's people that only like the Millennium Man that's I don't know if you'd actually do that that's crazy but um, um there, there's people I don't that know. just yeah you're right I, I've never met anybody that dislikes the Millennium era it's yeah. always either Showa or Heisei and there just like there's different aspects of it and you could kind of tell that it's so there's so many films that you're gonna have a lot of people that like certain films over their other films and obviously there's some probably no one likes and whatnot yeah. but i've heard of like there's one artist i know uh that loves son of godzilla and godzilla's revenge over the others and i'm just like that's freaking crazy but the man has the best art it's insane it doesn't make any sense and uh people just have different opinions whether it's uh, a serious take on godzilla a silly take or a take that they grew up with and the the five last films of the show era the films that i had the most like it was those films along with monster zero mothra versus godzilla and king kong versus godzilla were the ones that were always on tv and like destroy all monsters of course and unfortunately godzilla's revenge but these were the ones that were always on tv i watched as a kid and it's like yeah they were really yeah, they cool were. stuff but they were in a way compared to these ones uh, some of the older ones felt very limited in what they could do compared to these where uh these ones there's just a lot more happening the human characters feel like there's a lot more i don't know it feels like there's just cooler stuff happening when you do it and just everything's more unique like watching godzilla versus header as a kid as uh, like was awesome watching it as an adult i had more appreciation than i did when i was a kid ironically and with this movie you've got cockroach aliens you have alien cockroach Dude, people awesome. you have godzilla land you have like a two normal people with two hippie people and they're like teaming up to like stop aliens from destroying the earth and they're just like we got to do this and they like work with the military at a certain point but uh they call in like Gigan and Ghidorah to basically destroy the city oh and, and this is a good time to bring up too this all these movies post destroy all monsters take place before destroy all monsters that's why Ghidorah is still alive even though he dies at and destroy all monsters yeah and does Mecha, did the Mecha Godzilla ones take place before Destroy All Monsters? Yeah. They oh, wait, because that's in the future. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, because yeah. the, the Destroy All Monsters is 1999. Yeah. So, Comron, I hear you. And I agree with a lot of what you're saying. But, first off, Godzilla and Anguirus talk in this movie. It yes. is so stupid. If you watch Second, it in English. There oh my is God. so much. There is just. It's like over an hour until you even see any Godzilla action. Godzilla doesn't show up until the end of the movie for the fight. In it's the true, third but act. They, they, they have the human, honestly, the human stuff is pretty entertaining. Like the, the, the humans at one point, one dude gets stuck up by a guy. He's got a gun to his back and it's like, what is that? It's like, Oh, it's just corn. <laughs> It's so super though. Let's see, this is one of those movies. I want to, I want to see Godzilla fight, not the humans and the human stuff in this story just isn't, entertaining enough to keep me you know into it that whole time like they 
there's no Godzilla pace throughout the human parts to break it up. It's just they save it all towards the end. And even though Gigan's a great monster design and it's called Godzilla versus Gigan, Godzilla barely fights Gigan. He's fighting King Ghidorah the whole time. I will say um, this compared to when I saw it as a kid. I think I did enjoy it a little bit more as a kid, but I still have high pre- like I, I would have to realign things but i'm for at least standing now i would still consider this my favorite of them i but, i will, i agree with you there i did enjoy this way more as a kid because did you get the uh dude it's our godzilla land <laughs> like it's like <laughs> i know why we still don't really have one of those which is stupid but uh i remember that uh at the local video store that we had there was like the two pack and it came with godzilla versus mecha godzilla and godzilla versus gigan and you can rent them both I, together. I didn't get that one. It was just a, that was just a VHS recording for me. Uh, yeah. But I did get like a. I definitely have like a couple of Gigan toys. I, I freaking love that. And, and th- I, w- yeah. I wanted to see more Godzilla fighting Gigan though in this movie because Gigan actually makes Godzilla bleed for the first time ever on yeah. screen. His, he's, he's an intense freaking, enemy, and he's he a, cool has a He literally has like a buzz saw on his chest that yeah. just like cuts everything. And this whole thing too. This is the one movie. When you really think about it, this is the Angiris movie. This is the only movie we have with Angiris that's actually like Angiris. You bear, you have him in Destroyal Monsters, but not really. You have him yeah. in Godzilla Raids again, but he's like still like evil and it's like it doesn't, it is like gets roasted alive and stuff. This is the only movie where he's like truly there. Yeah. And also, honestly, too, it's the one where he has the most positive like outcomes because let's face it in one he literally gets his jaw ripped open the other one he oh, gets yeah. uh killed and one he literally is biting a door's neck and falls to a great length so yeah. he has the best outcome in this one you have them as two friends that are fighting together so it's like a great it's a great movie of friendship and brotherhood and sticking up against those when you're together and stuff but like the, the he, when they talk to each other if you're watching it in english it's like a crazy thing where it's like a weird static walkie talkie like and it's like hey godzilla and it's like what is it Aguirre? and it's like it's so it's like yeah it's funny but it's like it's fun you're like smiling and enjoying yourself unless you just i guess maybe unless you hate it but like i i love it and when you get to the fights like they honestly or when the fights themselves happen they're awesome and they do switch like at certain points they do fight each other and then they like switch uh they switch who they're fighting, and then obviously, like the tide turns because at a certain point, Gigan and Ghidorah keep kicking the shit out of them until they switch sides or switch partners, and then the tides turn there. But yeah, but the problem with the fights though is it's so much of the fights are uh, stock footage. That is that is actually why it doesn't hold up as much for me as an adult because I did notice that, and I was just like, oh, damn. I think that was actually the thing that made things sad for me was that I was like, ah, oh, damn it, it's not complete. And like I said, that makes me want to realign my movies a little bit. But uh, for now, until I do, it's still like, it was my number one. And at least, yeah, I mine mean, is fucking stock footage. But t- the last thing about it too, is it has a song at the end. that's like a Godzilla song. Uh... And it is so, I have played that song on loop so many times. It's such a good song where it's like, they're going into the water together. And it's actually like, it's vocals. There's full, like, there's actual um, lyrics to it. And it's just a fun, like lyrical song where they're singing together and, or not the monsters, but the people are singing about it. And it's like talking about Godzilla saving the, the place and stuff. But it's really good, honestly, too. You could look it up. It's like, I forget what it's called, but it's just look up Godzilla versus Gigan Godzilla song, I think, and you'll find it. But I'll yeah. have to listen to it. Maybe yeah. it's another movie I got to rewatch. But, you know, I I would say maybe it's a movie just to kind of check out some of the clips on YouTube or something just because Gigan's a cool creature or whatever. But it's not one of the other ones that I would really recommend. I think that it's uh, it's meh. Nah. I would say whereas uh, I would require Hydra, I would say I would recommend this one because you don't necessarily need to see it, but it is awesome to see a lot of Gigan. It's awesome to see. If you really just want to see Angiris, it's required if you want Angiris. Uh, mm-hmm. And the aesthetic of the Godzilla land and the aliens and stuff, like that stuff real itself is really, really awesome if you want to check out for that because there's some really cool designs there that we don't get in anything else besides this. So I just call that out there too. Okay, well, moving on, we have 
Godzilla versus Megalon. I've only seen this movie like once. What? Oh my yeah. god! This is this one is all right. This is I. If you talk bad about this, is where you'll make enemies. If you talk bad about this movie, because this is like everyone's. Oh, this that's right. Favorite. Jet Jaguar is in it. Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar. Another fantastic song. This is like the two, these two movies have just like great songs that are just going on, man. I know that according to the German dub, everything was created by Dr. Frankenstein and that Jet Jaguar is uh, King Kong in a robot suit. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah but, um, you know when you say it like that it's like well, it's a frankenstein movie where a yeah. monkey is a robot it's like wait what and then the poster and then the poster for the movie is uh them fighting on top of the world trade center even though none of it takes place in the united states oh yeah no the it's it's really great i would highly recommend people to look up italian godzilla posters specifically because they're the most far-fetched things you'll ever see yeah and it's just fun seeing non- american and non-japanese posters because they just do the weirdest things the weirdest things yeah um from what i remember it's been a long time since i've seen this movie i think jet jaguar is cool because i know that there's a ultraman and all that was really famous at the time and he's still really popular um megalon's a cool design gigan comes back so you get gigan uh there's Oh, and you get the Godzilla dropkick. That's yeah, awesome. That, that is amazing. So good. It is so good. It's so stupid. You, man, but you it's don't so like amazing. The Godzilla fly. You, you like the dropkick. What's the makeup? Yeah, it's man? all about, the, it's, it's about that tail support that he's got. Oh, God. But yeah, no, that um, dropkick is amazing. And the characters, too, in this are honestly. They're, they're kind of because it's like you got the guys that invented it. You got the guy that invents Jet Jaguar and his like best friend or something and like the his little brother. Uh-huh. and like the kid's kind of annoying or whatever but uh you have sea topia there is an underwater underground civilization that's like the the the, uh, the above ground world has been polluting and doing all this shit for far too long we're gonna stop them now and uh use them have megalon attack them to teach them a lesson mm-hmm. and they have like really crazy designs where they just honestly look like a giant frat house you got like the the bed sheet like greek design you know yeah uh, for the people there and i forget what the guy uh, I, the actor is apparently pretty f- pretty famous for his time but he's like the king of ctw he's some white dude I, I forget who he is though hmm. and... i have to say this i i don't really like godzilla's suit design in this movie though i didn't like the the ones that they use in this one throughout uh the mecha godzilla movies it's just the eyes are too big i really don't the dorsal plates are re- the dorsal plates are really like yeah fat. he's not the most he's not as threatening anymore yeah it's very it, this is a very kid-friendly looking godzilla yeah and they they do a whole thing where the these Cetopia agents are above ground and they keep beating the shit out of the inventor and his friends and <laughs> they take control of jaguar and these like jaguar as a beacon to lead megalon to where he needs to uh-huh. go to destroy things and eventually, like, uh, and th- the sounds from Megalon are cool too. He's like this kind of screeching giant bug monster who's like a he's beetle. like a he's almost like a cockroach or something with drills on his hand. Or well, he's a beetle because he's got the um, he's oh, yeah, got the, uh, yeah, he is a beetle. He's yeah. got the beetles, uh, uh, and not the antenna, but like a kind of like a crown type yeah. thing. Yeah, I forget what it's called, but like, there's types of beetles have this really cool horn. He definitely is some kind of giant bug, then, yeah. But he's got drills for hands, so he literally can fly and he can drill. And for a while, he's just destroying things until they get control of Jet Jaguar again. Jet Jaguar can not only just like think on, he becomes self aware, and he not only can like uh, like fight people, but he just does the mini thing where he just enlarges himself. So there's a oh, yeah. Jet he's Jaguar versus size. Megalon fight in the beginning, and at a certain point, he actually goes to Monster Island and gets Godzilla's attention to come help. And what's crazy too with this movie is the CTLP, when they do the earthquake, they use, I think they use stock footage for it. I'm not too sure, but they show an earthquake happening where a lot of the monsters get thrown down in the, uh, in the monster Island area. So you see like Rodan fall, you see Angrius fall and stuff. They're just kind of like sinking into the ground and whatnot uh, hmm. during the earthquake. And it actually, ironically, leads Angiris to what happens in the next film. But you have Godzilla eventually get there because Jet Jaguar has been fighting Megalon. Gigan comes and 
they both start beating the shit out of Jet Jaguar. Godzilla comes to help and they both start kicking the shit out of both of them until once again, they turn it around and start fighting them both. And the great thing about this too is Jet Jaguar, I think at one point gives a thumbs up to yes, the people. he does. And yeah, he holds like they fight until Gigan just says, yo, I'm out. I don't want to do this anymore. And they start fighting Megalon and Jet Jaguar holds Megalon down and Godzilla does the drop kick on him. He literally just jumps and just drifts through the air feet first and just kicks megalon it's amazing it's, absolutely amazing. it's one of the best godzilla moments it's up there with the dance and everything and that's uh for what i remember i i don't think i remember it enough to say uh, uh yeah i'd recommend watching it at least once it's not required but yeah just check it out if you want You're curious and it's, it's a fun movie and uh they end with them shaking hands. I just want oh, to say yeah. they're shaking hands and there's a Jit Jaguar song and it's so good. It, it's there's honestly, there, there's the songs from this and guy again, they're just great sing along songs. You're just like, Oh boy, I love this. It's, it's a fantastic time. But uh, yeah. for me personally, I'd rec- I would recommend it highly. Uh, it's definitely in my top five for sure. Yeah. Well, moving on. Uh, how many, we got two more movies. So we got, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. This is where the Showa era actually picks back up for me because this movie is really good. This is this a, is a fantastic great Godzilla movie. movie. It is. They don't overdo it with Godzilla as a superhero thing. He's just more kind of there. You have Mecha Godzilla, who is. They finally introduced another great villain because Mecha Godzilla is amazing. He's got a great design that actually looks really intimidating and mean. You got King Caesar with that stupid song that that girl sings to wake him up that goes on forever. It's you have a God- very long song. <laughs> Mecha Godzilla straight just messes Godzilla up in this movie. Godzilla's like bleeding out of his neck. It's and the got- bloodiest Godzilla movie. Yeah, it is. It's a glorious Godzilla movie, and it and not only knows- just Godzilla, but uh, Anguirus gets pretty. Oh yeah, Anguirus in this too. movie, and Mecha Godzilla like rips his jaw open like King Kong does of the T Rex, but Anguirus survives. Don't worry, and. It's just the whole thing is so good. This is an awesome Godzilla movie. Definitely watch this one. Yeah. And th- so this movie, it's got, so this is the, like, this is another alien movie. The aliens here. So we've gotten like cool aluminum, aluminum hat aliens. We've gotten lunar woman from the future alien or lunar woman aliens. We've gotten cockroach men aliens. We have monkey men, aliens now. They this are is... the apes. And if you're wondering where the title of this channel comes from, Third Planet from the Black Hole, it is a play for on the title of these aliens who are the apes from Planet 3 of the Black Hole. It's so good. And they've got also really cool designs. I think the leader is the one with like the crazy eye. Yeah, he's got there. like this mark on his eye. And he just sits there and smokes a cigar, and he's just like, "It looks like we're gonna have to continue our attack on Tokyo." Godzilla really thinks he could do this. Huh? Yes. <laughs> what a bastard! <laughs> it's so good. This movie is so awesome. Good. There's like secret agents and stuff. There's like, oh uh, yeah, and there's like, an Interpol agent. Yeah, but there's that that agent where like you he, he he gets hit in the face and it whacks off half of his face and it half turns into a gorilla. And he's when they like, die, they're just like, oh, oh, oh. yeah, he's just like, <laughs> it's just, so it's so it's crazy. So and awesome. It's cool because it starts off with like the, the, the main characters are in this like native area or not native area, but like, I guess, ancient Japanese area where this woman's mm-hmm. doing this crazy song and she has a vision of the future where it's like, uh, there's a monster that's going to uh, do this crazy stuff. The sun will like, it's the opposite thing, you know, sun rises in the, uh, west and sets in the east and whatnot and you know king caesar will have to come and help us and whatnot the whole thing here too is this is where we get mechagodzilla to sky besides just getting mechagodzilla we have fake godzilla like yes you have a godzilla that comes out of nowhere and he's destroying everything and you know we've had the last three movies where he is hero godzilla and you're like oh my god he's destroying things this is kind of freaky and even then though you hear him and it's the Mechagodzilla sound. It's like the, it's a very metal um, screech, if anything, where it's like, you're just like, what's wrong with Godzilla? Like, you know, something's up. And like, at one point he uh, is doing something and Anguirus comes out of the ground 
And Angus, you know, like I said, in Megalon, he falls through the ground during the earthquake. And this is like kind of where he winds up and he finds, because he finds Godzilla. And he's also getting Godzilla's attention at the same time. He's been like yelling for Godzilla, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and with this too, he fights him. Godzilla beats the shit out of him and rips open his jaw to where like part of his, it looks like part of his mouth is gone. Like he yeah. just tore it off. And it's incredibly, as a kid, I would say this is probably one of the two saddest moments in any of the monster movies that I had to watch from the Showa era where I was just like, oh, I, I, I can't. This is I, know, I didn't want to watch. I didn't want to watch that happen to Anguirus. And I hate that's the one part I always want to just kind of look away from. It. It's just so sad. It makes me so sad. Yeah. But, uh, we know Anguirus survives and they recover and they make yeah, up later God. because uh, destroy all monsters. But you see Godzilla come out and it's like, oh God, there's two Godzillas that look alike. Yeah. And once they start fighting, you get the reveal, like one little metal shard reveal. And it's like, oh, wait, why is that one shining? And he just does like the transformation in the Mecha Godzilla, which is such an awesome design. So cool. It's this whole movie's really good. Like, guys, this is one of the best show era movies. And I highly recommend it. I mean, it was a matter of time. I was surprised we didn't get Robot Godzilla earlier anyway. And Mecha Godzilla very much it becomes the number two monster overall next to King Ghidorah as Godzilla's main villain. Yeah, I think and, so. Like he he is in every era of Godzilla, no matter what, and potentially will be in the next movie too, coming up too. So it's uh, like we get so. Mecha Godzilla all the time, and he is highly iconic. Like a lot of people honestly know if you just ask the person, it's like, oh, you know Godzilla? It's like, yeah, you know Mecha Godzilla? Yeah. It's like you just know Mecha Godzilla. And it's awesome watching throughout the different eras his design just drastically changed for the better but this yeah. one is just so iconic and awesome this looking. one looks the meanest it's it's really cool and it's the first time you see something that's not a actual monster yeah like, beat godzilla too at the same time like it's he has an arsenal that's so powerful that godzilla is actually losing worse than he has with real like actual uh, organic monsters yeah because he's got literally finger missiles he's got a rainbow beam from his chest he's got eye lasers he's got like uh other stuff but like it's so much so to the point where you were watching godzilla bleed so many times especially like at the final fight when king caesar gets awakened yeah king uh, caesar's a cool monster too yeah he's like a kind of uh like a lion god yeah he's like yeah he's like a lion god and he tries fighting mecha godzilla and it's not going so hot to the point where Godzilla comes in and they both start getting their shit kicked out of them by Mecha Godzilla alone. This is also the first time you have, besides like uh, the early ones with Ghidorah, like, you know, the last two movies was a tag team each time. Yeah. This time, it's just two on one, but the one's so powerful. It's like hard for them to even like stay on his level at that point. Uh, yeah. To the point where like Godzilla has missiles sticking out of him. He's like bleeding profusely. Like he's covered in blood. Oh yeah, it's a brutal fight, and uh, like I said, this is a really good one, and we highly recommend it. Uh, I guess we'll move on to the final one. Yeah. All right, of the show era uh, is Terror of Mecha Godzilla. Uh, this is another good one. I really like this one too. It's a direct sequel to Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla. It introduces one of my favorite kaiju, Titanosaurus, which is a, a like a great kind of another version of Godzilla almost. He's a, uh, a fully aquatic monster. Yeah. And he's like a, yeah, he's just like an ancient, it's like almost like he's from the dinosaur times. And this one is cool too. It's got, uh, it's got uh, psychic links here. Yeah. Um, Titanosaurus is one of the monsters. I really want an SH monster arts of uh, Titanosaurus. He's such a cool monster. Um, yeah. It's uh, pretty much the aliens bring Mecha Godzilla back. They get a rematch. Godzilla gets a really, really good, uh, introduction in this movie with like the explosion behind him and everything you just see kind of a silhouette in front of it oh when he saves the kids too oh yeah that too and uh yeah the whole this is a good one i yeah. think it's it's a uh, it's a good way to end the show era yeah it's it's they do a full reversal here where the previous one you have two heroes versus one bad mm -hmm. monster this one is two bad monsters versus one good it's like it's crazy there too and uh, you've got a lot more human interaction because honestly, like they're kind of the keys to helping Godzilla win in this one. Yeah. 
just because uh, Titanosaurus is like a psychic link with the woman who the aliens are using because she's like half android now or something. She... Yeah, that part <laughs> is... Uh... <laughs> that was... <laughs> Like oh my god, she just so gets like it's it's so ridiculous. Yeah, but, uh, it's funny too. It's like this movie. I always feel like it's overlooked because mm-hmm. it comes right after Mechagodzilla. You get two Mechagodzilla movies in a row, and like it's called Terror of Mechagodzilla. Like it's Mechagodzilla's name in this one again. Yeah, but you don't really hear about it as much too. Like when you think about the later movies, ironically enough, like you look and the last movie if you got the dvd collection they cover all the early ones and then they skip over to throw all monsters because it's too big along with i think king kong vs godzilla and i can't remember if that one's in there or not but it's just the early movies plus godzilla's revenge plus terror mecha godzilla so all the kind of i would say honestly kind of the more popular ones like the megalon gigan and those ones are all just like not in this collection because they're kind of harder to put into it mm-hmm. and it's just funny how ironically they just skip like six movies and just put this one straight in before like just randomly with those but um it's not required i'd say i'd recommend it but it's not like anything specifically special Um, yeah it 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 is i just i think it's more just for it's got some good monster action in it oh yeah very much and and it is the last one of the the showa era movies um it is a lot of I I think Titanosaurus is a great design and I oh, think yeah, he, so. I think he's also very underrated compared to the rest of them and I really wish that we could see him in more stuff. Um, he was teased in so many video games that he never appeared in and everything and it's just uh, he's in the Godzilla comic series though for IDW at least. Oh yeah, IDW did a great job because they actually got everybody involved there. But yeah, um, I think do you have anything else to say to wrap this up? um just when you go through and watch these just see which ones stick out to you because honestly just by the way we were both talking uh i would say it might just differ person to person depending on what they're looking for because you have serious godzilla you've got evil godzilla you've got kind of wacky godzilla you've got anti-bullying godzilla which actually just kind of encourages bullying but there's so many different versions and the showa era is the most uh i would say flavorful with different variety than any others just because it's so long there's so many movies so you have a lot of different versions of him within this one era whereas when you go later on you're gonna get a much more consistent same type of godzilla that's not really changing throughout the films this is like kind of that one era where you actually kind of see that happen Mm -hmm. so definitely keep that in mind and just check them out see which ones stick out to you which ones become the ones you kind of cherish and recommend to others but that's what i would say yeah i agree it's uh there's a lot of variety to choose from and uh you know it's if you're a sci-fi fan or anything like that you there's definitely some great ones on here um i was gonna say did you want to try to rank them from worst to best but that that's probably take a too long, long list yeah yeah that's like a whole video in itself but anyways guys i think we'll wrap this episode up there uh on our next episode we'll be uh going over the heisei era of godzilla which best is best era yeah, I think era. I think both of us could agree that's probably our favorite era. Um, so, anyways, guys, we thank you for watching, and you can listen to this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. You could also watch it on YouTube and our website www.thirdplanetfrom or no www.thirdplanet.news. Okay, I got that right. I I can't even remember my own website's name. <laughs> Anyways, Comron, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on my channel at Sutra Side Talk uh, on pretty much any podcast platform. Uh, we do four different shows. Uh, one Sutra Side Talk. We've got uh, four. We got pretty much like game, movie, TV news that we talk about weekly. We've got a uh, Sutra Side Watch where we do every other week a uh, analysis on a specific film. We've got Up to It, Down to It, which is just an off the rails uh, show where we just pick a topic and go in on it, and that's like a very inconsistent show. And then, of course, we got Cut of Steel, which Danny's on, where we uh, talk about a DC film from the DC Extended Universe each episode. And so far, we've actually put out uh, Man of Steel. And uh, on Friday, February 5th, we'll have the second episode with uh, Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition. And we'll talk about that. But 
yeah, you can find those on any podcast platform and you can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at, at Sutra Side Talk. All right. Sounds good. Uh, anyways, Kamran, thanks for being on here. And I look forward to going over the rest of the Godzilla movies with you. Definitely. Same here, man. Thank you for having me. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching or thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time. Later. Hello.